What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another Dart Frog Adventure. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of Kia Soul camping. Um, yeah, this should be fun. Uh, we're out here camping, so it's going to be a couple days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a video of most of our camping trips. So just kind of break it up here and there and make you guys a video. I thought it'd be a fun video to do, but uh, yeah, I'll show you my setup here in a little bit. So as you can see, we're out here in the mountains, way up here camping. Got a lot of people up here today, but uh, I'm out here with Aspen. There's my Kia. And uh, so I'm gonna be showing you my setup and how I camp in Aspen and whatnot. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, got all my camping gear pretty much jammed in the back end of Aspen. So let me show you some of our camping gear. The only thing I do is put my chairs up there on her rack. That's the only thing I need to do, but I got, all, I got my table over there, I got my cooler in there, I got all kinds of stuff. We're going to be going ahead and switching campgrounds. We're going to be camping for about three days out here in the mountains, my wife and I. But let me go ahead and show you the back end of the Aspen and how she's all jam-packed in there. And I got stuff down in the wheel well and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack some of the stuff. And uh, I'll kind of give you guys a show as I'm going through and everything too. So, But as you can see, Aspen's really packed up down here in her wheel well. I got more stuff. I got my tent over there. Got ropes, got blankets. Got my fishing pole down there. Got all kinds of stuff. But like I said, I'll go ahead and I'll give you guys more of a view after I get set up. Gotta get everything unpacked here right now. Get my tent set up. Um, that's just pretty much to hold our spot if we take off um, to go somewhere. If we need to go down and get supplies or something, just leave a tent up, up here. That way nobody takes our spot. But we have a pretty cool spot here. Let me show you around the spot a little bit. So, I mean, it's pretty close to the road. We've got people coming up and down here. Um, it is the weekend, so it's gonna be packed up here. It's a little bit, I mean, it's the weekend after 4th of July, so I figure, you know, some people probably pull out, but for the most part, it's still packed up here. Uh, like I said, we'll be switching spots here and there uh, through the next couple days, so we'll be heading more up the canyon. And if you've been following my videos, you might recognize this canyon as the Haunted Bootlegger Canyon. Um, the Haunted Mine, is up the canyon about two miles of that way so we're probably not going to go to the mine but then again i don't know uh, it just kind of depends on how we feel and what we want to do but uh yeah i was talking about that mine up there in my last video the haunted quarry road with uh jimmy and uh, talking about you know tommy knockers last time Marnie and i spent the night in this uh camping spot something big come across it was over there on the other side of the river something big was over there i don't know what it was couldn't see it i got a video of it but like here's the river but let me go ahead and show you that over there too so yeah we got this little bit of a river access down here people like to come down here fishing often but yeah right over in there let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that But yeah, something big came in one night over there. Like I said, we couldn't see it. We could hear it, but we couldn't see it. I tried getting a video of it, but the river drowned it out the noise it was making. So I don't know if it's gonna come back again tonight, but who knows? So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and start unpacking Aspen, getting this show on the road, and I'll show you guys a little bit as I'm setting up. out here hope the wind chills out but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how I got Aspen uh, set up for camping and everything I'm uh, right now I have like a box that I built for there so we can scoot way back put our pads down have all that stuff so we can stretch out a little bit let me show you the box real quick so I went ahead and built this box it's uh, 48 long by 8 wide and 20 tall so it sits right there under the seats. What we'll do is we'll put some blankets down there and uh, have like our heads and everything up here. We'll scoot the seats forward and whatnot. So yeah, after I get all that set up and everything, I'll show you how all the bedding goes. Um, like I said, I got a lot of stuff in the Aspen. You can fit quite a bit in these Kias. So there's my 
spot there. Got my shovel, got my grill, got my fishing pole. Oh, there's my ice scraper. I was looking for that this winter. <laughs> got my tent there. Got some extra ropes. Got a blanket. Got my spare tire. Got quite a bit back in there. Um, she holds quite a bit. I got her luggage rack up there right now holding our mattresses and whatnot. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and start laying all that out and getting that set up. And I'll get back with you guys. So I got it all set up in there. Uh, my wife's going to get ready to take a little bit of a nap in there. But let me show you what I got going on. So... <sighs> All my Jurassic Park stickers. So, yeah, there's the bed right there. Nice and comfy. There it is. So, now that I've had an aspen like open quite a bit and everything, since I'm up here in the mountains, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start it up for about five minutes just to charge up the battery, just to make sure you know, because even though the dome lights don't pull that much energy, it's Always good to just kind of start it up just to make sure everything is going. And uh, what I'm going to do after I get Aspen running for a couple minutes is I'm going to go ahead and start unpacking the rest of our camp spot, getting our uh, fire set up and whatnot, <coughs> and uh, go gather up some firewood and all that fun stuff. And then I'm going to get this all set up and I'll bring you guys a quick little shot of our setup here. So I just got everything kind of set up, just got dinner going, and got built my little fire pit over there. My wife's waking up from her nap and everything. So my dinner, uh, there's some vegetables and some chicken. I'm gonna put it on the little fire pit over here. I already got one on there right now. So yeah, I'm gonna put it on my little fire pit. I put some coals in there and whatnot. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and cook some dinner, get some stuff going, whatnot, and go from there. So yeah, it's starting to get a little bit dark out here. Got my fire going finally. Wind's finally calmed down and everything. We're, uh, dinner's about done. Probably about another 10 minutes on dinner. And uh, that should be ready to go. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a kind of a cool, chill night tonight so far. Probably getting a little bit chilly tonight. So we got our sweatshirts and whatnot. But uh, yeah, and Aspen's all nice and cozy, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But there you go, beautiful. So yeah, we got our basically our mobile tent set up, and uh, yeah, it's we're just getting ready to relax and kick it over here by the fire for a little while, and you know see how the evening goes and get at it again tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it night, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. What's up, adventurers? Welcome back, second day. Um, yeah, so today. We ended up moving to a different camp spot. I'll show you a camp spot here in a little bit. Um, but I ended up getting a pretty late start today, getting everything moved, getting down and getting some new supplies and whatnot. Um, so I'm not sure how much I'm gonna probably show you guys here today for our day two, but definitely got one more day out here camping. But right now I'm gonna take you over and show you one of my favorite fishing spots. Maybe we'll do a little bit of fishing tomorrow. But uh, yeah, with these fish up here, they're pretty slick. If they see it, they'll split. We'll go tell their friends and your fishing trip's over with in that spot. But uh, let's go down and check out one of my favorite spots. If I can make it down here without falling. So yeah, this spot right here is one of my favorites for fishing in this area by this campground, or this camping spot. It's pretty good. They all pull up right in there and right in there. I'm gonna send it over there and they'll usually hit. But yeah, it's part of our camp spot. Like I said, my apologies. I got a little bit of a late start today, so I haven't been able to do too much. I've been going to get supplies and whatnot and uh, trying to get the campsite set up and everything. Ended up going down and getting Marnay, so she's here with us this evening. Um, so yeah, she's, she's taking a nap right now, otherwise she'd be in the video. She might be in the video later. I don't know if she's planning on staying the night with us, probably. So she'll probably be in the camping uh, video for her here in uh, day three. So my wife's in the campground right now. Like I said, Marnie is sleeping. I think my wife is tending to the fire or getting some stuff going. But uh, we'll be walking in there shortly so you can see our new camp spot. It's pretty cool. I like this one. It's like one of my favorites. Like I said, good fishing on both sides of it. Uh, we have river access right over here. But yeah, this is our camp spot right there. My wife's 
chilling out reading a book right at the moment. So, there's Aspen. There's my wife. So, yeah, this is our camp spot. And if you guys recognize this spot, I'll give you a second to see if you recognize this, especially if you've been following my channel and everything. So let me get in a spot where I can show you. And here it is. You guys recognize that spot? If you haven't been following my channel, that's where we had that cow come in into our camp spot last year. But uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll show you around our camp spot here in a second. So let's go ahead and check this. So we got river access down there. Somebody's been up here shooting clay pigeons. But yeah, we got that over here. This is all of our camp spot. My wife's over there. Uh, yeah, it was last year um, that we were out here in this spot and the cow come in. And uh, here's another cool thing, cause like, well, not really a cool thing, but uh, it's cool to see it now, if you could have seen it then versus now. But, uh, so right here, the river used to go through there. Now it comes down here, right up there. So the thing is, you know, we had a flood a uh, year or so ago and it rerouted this whole entire river. Now, like I was telling you, the river used to go over there and whatnot, but now it comes down and goes this way. So I'm gonna walk over here so you can guys can see how it kind of forks out. I'll go up to the road so you can really see how it forks out, which is kind of crazy. Um, believe it or not, there's really not good fishing in this spot right here. But uh, yeah. So we got a little pond or like a little out pool, outreach over there. If you can manage to get your hook in over there, you might catch something, but I've never caught anything in this area. But yeah, there it goes down there. I'll go over here to the road. The road's like right up there. So I'll head over to the road and I'll show you from that side over here how it forks out. And you can see back over in there where the river used to go, there's a big like pond back in there now. It's pretty hard to get to unless you have waders. That's the only way you can get across this little river. Uh, there's really no bridge or anything like that. Uh, I haven't really seen any kind of access to being able to get over there. Like I said, probably the only thing you'll be able to do is get waders and go over there. But I'm going to head over to the road real quick and I'll show you uh, across the road out uh, to where it forks out and everything. Get up to the road. Definitely got to check traffic, make sure there's nobody coming. Because people fly up and down this road with like ATVs, UTVs, all that. Speaking of, somebody's coming right now. So I'm going to get off the side of the road here. Like I said, you always got to watch for traffic on this road here. Yeah, there he is right there. I wonder if that's DNR. Doesn't look like it. But, uh, no, I just saw me in a Bronco. Oh, yeah, um, the spot that we're in right now. Uh, if you've been following my videos on my channel and everything, uh, here comes somebody else. Give me a second, sorry. Like I said, if you've been following our videos and everything, this is where we saw that UFO that night, where it, like, it was that little white ball up in the sky and it come down real quick and then shot off the other direction. Somebody else is coming. Yep, there's a little UTV. Uh, sorry, I'll get to it here in a second. <laughs> but yeah, anyhow, that it, like come down white. That's what caught my eye. I thought it was like a falling star. And I uh, got a hold of Marnie. I was like, Marnie, check this out, you know? And uh, all of a sudden it turned blue and shot off the other direction. It shot off that way. Um, so here's that fork in that river I was talking about how the pond That's the fork right there. So it went all the way around in the back. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys Yeah, you can see how it goes you can see how it goes back in there a little ways Anything let me come down here a little farther I'll zoom out for you. Sorry Sounds like a motorcycles coming up the road this time But yeah this used to be really good fishing right in this spot, but due to the fact the river's down. See, that's where we were standing out over there when I was pointing to the road over here. But <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys around here on day two. Like I said, I'm not sure how much is going to happen here on day two. Um, it looks like Marnay's getting ready to get up. But uh, yeah, so I got to get back to that camp spot, get everything set up. Maybe I'll come back 
do a little bit more after we get a little bit more set up. Um, I put the tent out this afternoon so we could go out and get supplies. So and there's our tent right there. Like I was saying earlier, it's just pretty much uh, a way to keep our spot so nobody comes into the spot and everything while we're gone, going out and getting supplies and whatnot. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'll go ahead and probably get back to you guys a little bit later tonight and whatnot. Maybe, maybe after everything kind of settles down, we get kind of caught up. Well, pretty much me, I get caught up on all the duties of getting everything going, cooking dinner, getting firewood, all that fun stuff. I showed how I had that all set up and everything. I got my box in there. I got my rack on top for carrying stuff and whatnot. So I'm gonna have to make some more room to be able to get my cousin back down, Marnay, so she can actually sit in there. Because uh, when we went and picked her up, she actually had to lay down on the bed as we were coming up here. So <laughs> she didn't have a lot of room to, uh, to you know, come up here with us. But uh, anyhow, so I'm gonna go ahead and get back to you guys here soon. I gotta get back to tending everything, getting some firewood and whatnot. But uh, see you guys in a little while. So yeah, it's getting a little late. Um, sorry I didn't get a chance to get you guys out and around with me on day two, but uh, I was kind of backed up trying to get everything going. Everybody's kind of falling asleep now. Wife's asleep, uh, Marnie's asleep. But uh, this is one of the things I like to do when I'm uh, out camping, is I like to get some solar lights, like those little garden solar lights, and uh, put them on, like I have one on a tripod right now. Let's see, there it is, right there, yeah. There it is. It's just a garden light. I'll show you guys that tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I have it on my camera tripod. I like to grab a couple of those and put them around the camp spike. Uh, you know, ones by like the tents and everything. So that way if somebody has to get up in the middle of the night, they can see what they're doing. Put one over by where the bathroom's at. Type of thing. You know, all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and start uh, uh, wrapping down, calling this a night. And I will see you guys in the morning. Welcome back adventurers, welcome to day three. Um, got kind of a late start today, kind of like I did yesterday too. But uh, anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and go out and do a little bit of fishing and uh, see what we can catch. Let's go. One of my favorite fishing spots is like right over here. It's right next to our campsite. It's pretty cool. Just a quick little walk and you're right there. Let's see if we can catch some fish out here today. Um, I did a little bit of fishing earlier this morning didn't do too good. Uh, hoping to catch a little bit of breakfast, but didn't work out well. So let's go ahead and uh, check out the spots right here. And I'll get you guys out there with me. The thing with these mountain fish is, if they see you, they're going to take off and tell their friends. And your fishing trip's pretty well over with. So if you can kind of sneak up on them where they don't see you, or if they're not really chasing your lures and then see you, uh, you should be able to catch something. Let's see what's going on. Now's a pretty good time of day to start fishing. So let me get you guys set up real quick. Here's the spot. It's a pretty nice little spot. I'll zoom in for you. So you can kind of see it. So they usually hang out like right back in there, a little bit over here, and quite a bit over in there. So let's go ahead and see what happens.
Well, I had a couple follow, but uh, like I said, as soon as they follow it, they ain't gonna hit it. You can send it right past them and they'll never hit it. So we'll move on to another spot. Um, I think we're gonna try over here for a second. See what happens over there. Yeah, so I'm getting back here to the camp. Looks like the girls have gotten the fires going, which is nice. So, yep, everybody's over here at the camp. So, got the oh, fire going. I almost tripped over that stick over there. Stupid little stick. Hi, beautiful. I'm just. Hi, Marnie. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, what's going on, Marnie? I saw that. Oh, did you? Finished cooking up my fish. Excellent. Did you save me any burger to uh, make? I, it's all on the grill. Oh, it's on the grill? Oh, okay. There's a tiny piece of cod in there if you want. Oh, uh, no, okay. thank you. Are you sure? I'm kind of upset with fishies today. I can understand that. <laughs> you don't want it? I'm good. So. Excellent. So, yeah, ah, I'm going to attack my butterfly here. So, I got, well, oh, Marnie was kind enough to put burgers on the grill for me. So, let's see. There we go. Just got a little hibachi down there. A barbecue grill. Separate from the big fire over here. Yeah. So, I like to have that for cooking and that one for our campfire and everything. But, uh, yeah, I'm back here at the camp spot. Unfortunately, I didn't catch any fishies today. Eh, that's how the cookie crumbles. Sometimes you catch them, sometimes you don't. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and relax for a little while and I'll get back to you guys later. So yeah, it's getting a little bit dark out here. I have some yard lights out here, solar powered yard lights to help keep our campground, our campsite uh, lit up at night when the fire's kind of low and you know, in case we need to get up and go to the bathroom or something like that. So let me show you my lights. So I got one there. Got one over there by Marne. Got one here. So yeah, it's, it'll light up. So yeah, it'll light up the campground pretty good. Um, so hopefully, by the time it gets pretty dark out here, I'll show you guys the lights, hopefully. I might have to add in a little light up here, but you never know. Uh, but yeah, we're getting ready to pretty much start wrapping down the last day of camping and whatnot. So uh, I'll probably get back with you guys here in a while and you know, show you around a little bit more after it gets dark. But that's probably going to be it for this video. Uh, maybe do a little bit tomorrow before we take off. Probably just to do the outro and, you know, say... Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video up to this point. So, uh, thank you guys, and we'll see you probably either later tonight or early tomorrow. Welcome back adventurers. It's the last uh, morning. I'm just gonna go out and get some firewood here. Um, the girls are still sleeping, Marnie is sleeping, my wife's sleeping. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get some firewood, get that up and ready for them so they can get up and cook some hot dogs or get something to eat, whatever. Gather up some firewood. Um, so last night before Marnie and I were getting ready to settle in and go to bed, uh, the fire was pretty low and we heard some kind of crazy scream on the other side of the river from our campground um yeah i'll take you through the campground we'll see if we find any tracks or anything like that see if maybe something came into the site but uh yeah it, it was crazy we weren't we weren't able to get uh 
and scream on camera. Like I said, some strange stuff happens out here. Uh, this is an old bootlegger canyon, an old fur trapping canyon, uh, back late, late 1800s. Uh, this is all fur trapping area up here. There's like uh, beavers and stuff like that. And they have, uh, the fur trappers would have like forges and stuff set up here in certain areas. So if their equipment broke, they were able to fix it. And then if you fast forward about a hundred years, we ended up, uh, we were in the Prohibition era, which was all the bootleggers that run through here. And uh, there's some crazy stuff that happens in this canyon, even to this day. Um, but uh, yeah, we like I said, Marty and I, Jimmy, uh, while well, us kid, whenever we all come up here, when we do our videos and stuff like that in different areas of the canyon or wherever we go, type of thing, uh, we seem to get a lot of activity up here in the haunted bootlegger canyon. Um, but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through one of our old camp spots that's just like right up the road from where we're camping right now. Um, it was one of the camp, so camp spots that uh, when Marnay and I were camping there, something come in, something big came in. It brushed up against her tent, it brushed up against the car, and it actually rocked my car back and forth. She said it was messing with her tent a little bit too. Um, what woke her up is when it was messing with her tent. She didn't get a chance to see it or anything. It didn't make a lot of noise, but she could hear it moving around her tent. And she said it was pretty darn big. So we're gonna go over here and check out this old spot because area 51 and a half is just right up there. Um, so a lot of strange stuff happens right here in this little section of the canyon. I don't know why, it's just it's really strange. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get some firewood uh, gathered up for the girls. And uh, probably do a little bit of fishing. I'll take you guys with me fishing. It'll probably be the last little bit of fishing that I'm able to do up here before we have to take off and whatnot. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go through this other camp spot real quick. See if anything, uh, see if we see any prints or see if we see anything that was disturbing this camp spot at all. So let's go check out this camp spot. So I'm not seeing any prints yet. Doesn't really look like this camp spot's been disturbed in any way, shape, or form. But this is one of the crazy spots too, up here, this, this camp spot. Uh, the first night we came up here, my wife and I, we almost took this spot. And she's like, no, let's, let's go ahead and see if we can find a different spot. Yeah, nothing looks out of the ordinary over here. I didn't see any tracks or anything. So let's go through our camp spot and let's see if there's any tracks down by the river. Uh, see if there's anything big. Oh wait, there is some tracks here. Let's see what they are. Yep, there's some tracks right here. Those are raccoons. Yep. You see it right there. Right there, right there. They're all going this way. Some more right in there. Yeah, so the animal traffic last night was pretty heavy. Uh, raccoons uh, is what we saw. I was able to catch one of those little buggers on camera sort of last night. You see his eyes shine. So what I'll do is after the end of this video, I'll put in some of the B-roll footage that I got from last night. Um, so you guys can see that too. Like I said, we were unable to catch that scream. Um, but the weirdest thing about that is, like I was explaining some of the B-roll from last night, is there's been Bigfoot sightings, well not so much sightings as, re uh, as there has been reports up in this area. And one of the times that Wild West Kid and I were staying over in Area 51 and a half, we heard a god awful scream and it was right outside of our camp spot. I wish I would have caught that on camera. Cause that lasted for about a good 15, 20 minutes. And uh, no matter how much I stoked up the fire, it was not 
uh, deterring that whatever was making that scream. I think maybe Bobcat, but I'm not sure. I believe we have Bobcats in this area, but I don't know for fact. But uh, yeah, and we heard something, like Marnie and I last night heard something very similar to what Wild West Kid and I heard just over in Area 51. So it goes, it goes Area 51, our little weird spot that we have over there that I just showed you, and then our camp spot right down there. So I'm right here on the edge of our camp spot, and I saw some of these right here. Some more prints on that side. Some more right there. Look like raccoon. So let's go ahead and go through the our camp site and see what happens. See if we see any tracks or anything like that. Like I said, I'm just getting up right now. So this is the first time I'm going through our camp spot. And uh, I thought I'd bring you guys with us. Or I thought I'd bring you guys with me, not us. <laughs> you guys are awesome, thank you. But um, I thought I'd bring you guys with me to walk through our camp spot and see if there's anything uh, out of the ordinary in our campsite. So we'll be a little bit quiet because everybody's still sleeping. So let's go ahead and look at the, we'll go down by the river and then we'll check out by the fire and we'll just look around our camp spot. So let's go check it out. Let's go down by the river first. So far I'm not seeing anything. Not seeing any kind of tracks yet. Because you see tracks up in this area over here. Because of anything that would come down and get like something to drink in the middle of the night. So nothing so far. I'm not seeing anything yet. Oh, that's nothing. Well, looks like some kind of print, but it's kind of hard to tell. I don't, I don't think that's a print. So nothing over here. Our cooler wasn't disturbed. I put a big rock on our cooler. We'll go look up there here in a second. Looks like all of our stuff's still here and it hasn't been disturbed. There's a rock iron cooler so the raccoons can't get into it. That's a pretty heavy rock too. It's probably like a 30 pound rock. Doesn't look like anything on the table has been disturbed. Then again, we didn't leave anything out. Oh, I forgot the chips, but the chips are full still. Nothing's been wrong with the chips. Like I said, I put everything in the cooler. Let's see what's in the cooler. Yeah, so there's all of our stuff. I'm not seeing anything over here, so let's go down the road a little bit further. Go to the edge of our camp spot. See if there's any tracks up here. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's old. anything up here. Let me get away from the camp spot a little bit and uh, I'll get back with you guys here in a second. So it doesn't look like anything really came into our camp spot last night, which is good. Um, 
Yeah, so putting all the food in the cooler, that works for the small animals, like the raccoons and shit like that. But if you get a bear in there, your cooler's getting torn apart. Uh, don't leave food in your vehicle, especially if you're in your vehicle sleeping, like uh, how my wife and I were doing. Uh, you definitely don't want food in there. Here comes the vehicle. So I'm gonna get off the side of the road. Uh, Cause if a bear comes in your uh, sight and he's hungry enough, and he smells a little bit of food in your car, he will rip the car apart like a pop can to get to the food and you're inside there with it. So <laughs> not good, but yeah, like I said, the cooler trick only works for little animals. So, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look like anything came into our spot last night, which is good. I just lost my cord. I gotta charge up one of my cameras. Okay, let me get my cord put away. I'm sorry. Kind of got like this six foot cord that I use to run off my power bank so I can uh, charge up my phone or my camera or whatever I need to do while I'm out here in the hills. So let me see. So here's my power bank and uh, it's still pretty charged. Let's see, you can see the little lights on it right here. So it's still pretty fresh. It's a good, it's a really good battery bank. It cost me like a hundred bucks. I use it for my cameras and my flashlights and stuff like when we're out on an adventure or something. If like something takes down our flashlights, because we usually have problems with our flashlights for some weird reason. Uh, so we just run them off a battery bank because if we try to run them off their own power source, they drain really fast or they go out or they get dim or they do something stupid. So that's why we always have a battery bank with us. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and start gathering up some firewood for the girls. Because uh, they're going to be waking up here shortly. And once I get that all gathered up, then I'm going to go around real quick and hit a couple of spots and see if maybe we can catch a fish before we head out today. But uh, I really want to thank you guys for watching the videos. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the subscribes. Thank you for the likes. Um, thank you for liking the videos and enjoying them. Um, because like this one has been a three day one. I've been doing a lot of filming on this video. It's taken me three days to put this video, just get enough footage to get this video together. Uh, it's probably going to take me forever to edit this video, but that's okay. I like editing. I really like, uh, doing that. Cause like I said, you never know what we catch out here. We are, we're always catching something crazy and something weird out in these areas. So that's why we really like coming out here. Uh, we like filming you know, doing the videos for you guys out in this area so you can, you know, see the areas that we come around and explore. Like this spot right here is amazing. Camera doesn't do it any justice, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this spot real quick so you guys can see it.
Got your breakfast, Marnie. That's cute. <laughs> He's a good size. Careful of the hook there. He should come out pretty easy. Yep. Careful. Ooh, one right through his eyeball. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, hi. Ooh. You want me to try to get it? Yeah, you might have to. It's kind of okay. wedged in that eye. Got his poor eyeball. Yeah. Can't send this little guy back. Nope. There you go. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, he lost his eye. All right. So yeah, we ended up catching a, a fish. Brought it back from Marnie to munch on for breakfast. Share some of it with her, probably. But uh, yeah, I'll get back with you guys here later. What's going on, adventurers? So, Marnie and I decided to stay one more night, so we might be able to bring you one more uh, night of adventure on camping and whatnot. So instead of three days, it's gonna be four days. Uh, we got a really late start today. Uh, we went down to go get some supplies and simply put, all hell broke loose. So we didn't get back, I didn't get a chance to get back up here until right about now, which is, Sun's getting ready to go down here in about an hour, maybe two if we're lucky. So we're scrambling, trying to get our wood back together and, you know, get our camp kind of up and running again. Uh, so I'm going to go and gather up some firewood and I'll get back with you guys here when I'm back in the, in the camp spot with Marnie. And uh, we'll see what tonight brings. Last night was pretty crazy. Uh, so if you want to, if you're interested in what happened last night, I'm going to put that at the end of this video. So after everything's said and done, Stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm going to put a couple of short uh, little segments in there. Or maybe just a short little segment after the video is done. So make sure you stay tuned until the end of this video for sure to find out what happened last night. Alright, so I'm going to gather up some firewood and I'll get back with you guys here soon. Alright, so I made it back to camp after gathering up some firewood. Yeah, I took a little, quick little break before I got back with you guys and everything. But... Got my cousin Marnie here with us again tonight. We decided to stay one more night, so. Say hi, Marnie. Hello. So, uh, so yeah, last night, so last night, um, we heard something really strange on the other side of the river over here. Uh, crazy, there were some raccoons that come down, uh, but this other noise was not a raccoon. We're not sure what it was. Uh, we're gonna see if we can try to figure it out at some point. I'm gonna do a Google search on what I think may have been over there, but. See if it matches the sound that we heard. But, um, so what do you think of the sound that we heard last night, Marnie? Still trying to figure it out. It could be a bobcat. They make some weird noises. Could That's what I was thinking. Beaver. I don't beaver. beaver. That's a good makes, choice. I'm not sure either. It was enough to make us nervous and not go to bed immediately. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. So yeah, we were getting ready to settle down for bed and that strange noise happened. I wasn't able to catch it on camera because it just caught us off guard. And uh, so, but anyhow, like I said earlier, make sure you stay until the end of the video. I'm going to put some bonus footage on after this video. Uh, so you, you'll get a chance to see what happened last night. Um, so we're, we're kind of skeptic on if something like that might happen again tonight. We don't know. But uh, like I was saying earlier in the video, uh, we are in the Haunted Booga Bootlegger Canyon, right, Marnie? Booga Booga? Yeah. Booga Uh So, yeah, we're in the Haunted Bootlegger Canyon, and there's been some strange stuff up here. Um, what have you experienced up here, Marnie, since I'm you've been up here camping? Really weird noises, and when I, every time I'm camping in a different spot, last year there were a few different instances where it something was walking around my tent there was a lot of weird noises in the camp and it sounded like a baseball bat was hitting a rock yeah that was crazy but that that scared me so that was over there in uh, our little spot we don't really have a name for it but it's that one that showed you earlier in the video it's on that side of the road and it kind of goes back in there that's why i was telling you that something went around marnie's tent 
That was that night, because that, that area is like right over there by Area 51 and a half. Yeah, well that night, a bunch of raccoons had come in, and they woke me up because they are chattering, and they're loud, and they're attacking our hot dog buns because we left them out on accident. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they go dead silent, like almost immediately silent, and they ran off. And then something big was walking around my tent and sniffing. I'm thinking it might have been a mountain lion, but I'm not sure. That's a good possibility. But it scared the crap out of me. I didn't know it was safe until the raccoons returned. Exactly. Yeah, because like I said, something bumped into my car. Uh, it bumped into Aspen over there, and it made Aspen rock back and forth. And that was the same night that Marnay was in her tent over there and whatnot. It, it was crazy. I mean, there, there's some crazy stuff that happens out here. Uh, like I was saying earlier in the video, you know, this used to be um a fur trapping run as well as a bootlegger run too and uh the both the campgrounds over here the one that's over there and the one that's down that way uh they both have some strange activity to them that one more so um gotta wait for this bike to go through <laughs> somebody on a bike just went through but uh yeah so there's some strange activity that happens up here um if you've been following my channel uh my cousin Wild West Kid and I, when we stayed at Area 51, we went over to the other campground up the way a little bit to go get some firewood. And as soon as we pulled in there, we saw this big black shadow dart behind a tree as our lights went into the campground. Because you got to go up the campground road a little bit. And once you hit that bridge, you kind of level out. And that's when we leveled out. That's when we saw that big shadow run behind a tree. So we're, we both saw it. We were like, Okay, you know, whatever. We didn't really think too much of it. We were just like, well, whatever. So we got out of the car. It was dead silent. And that campground is, how far do you think, Marnie? Not very far from it's us. It's like a five to ten minute walk. So, yeah, probably like a two block, probably about two blocks away from us. If you were to put it in blocks, like city blocks type of thing. So, it, it'd probably be about that far away from where we're at right now. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, stuff comes down off these hills over here, too. Like, I don't know if you can see this hill aside or not. Let me get over here some for you. Yeah, it just goes up there, you know, and this is the main road where we all travel in and out of. This is where you always see the UTVs and ATVs and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, some strange stuff happens up here. So, like I said, stick around for the bonus, bonus footage if I could even talk tonight. <laughs> but yeah so we decided to do one more night out here maybe we'll catch that sound that happened last night we don't know we're kind of hoping not but uh oh this is also the same spot we were in when that uh falling ufo star weird light just like yeah drop down and then like shoot off exactly the weirdest thing like at first we thought it was a satellite we're like oh it's blinking right but then it changed colors dropped down and then shot off horizontally i've never seen a drone or a satellite do anything like that whatever it was it was not normal not for as quick as it went no i mean that thing went quick because it like i was standing like right here and i was able to look up through those trees up there and what i saw is i saw the what caught my eyes the falling star that come down well i thought it was a falling star but it wasn't it was like a white little orb up in the sky come down between the tree right there Stop for a split second, turn blue, and shot off the mountain, up onto the mountainside that way. Like I was saying earlier, we're not far from the Uintas, and the Uintas, the Uinta Mountains, have some strange, strange activity. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Uinta Mountains here in Utah, Google them. And you'll see the strange activity that they have out there, the stuff that they report out there. It's, it's strange. So, I mean, what's your thoughts on the Uintas, Marnie? I don't know much about the Uintas, I just know that there's a lot of really weird sightings there. And UFO activity UFO or activity, uh, UAP or how, uh, yeah, unidentified, unidentified uh, aerial phenomenon, yeah. UAP, yeah. So, yeah, some really strange stuff happens out in these hills. Uh, like I said, it's only maybe a couple hours on the other side of that mountain if you're to, like, drive around the mountain to get to it. It's right there, almost on the border of uh, Utah and Colorado. So it's some strange stuff out there, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, so like I said, most definitely stick around and watch the bonus footage on this video. Talk to you guys in a while.
Welcome back adventurers. Uh, so today is the last day. We're getting everything all packed up and we're getting ready to head down. Uh, last night wasn't uh, too crazy. Heard some strange noises, but nothing really out of the ordinary. Uh, Marne is over there putting the fire out right now. Thank you, Marne. So, so yeah, it's going to take me a little while to do a lot of editing on this video and whatnot. It's like four days worth of video editing. But I just wanted to bring you guys a quick camping video. You guys seem to like those. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've watched the video all the way up to this point, most definitely stay tuned. I'm going to throw a couple of bonus features, some uh, some little stuff that we encountered the other night ago and whatnot. So I'm going to throw that in on after this video. But uh, yeah, so if you like this video, hit like. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe. Until the next adventure. That was weird. Something's over there. It sounded big too. There it is. There's some eyes over there just a little bit ago. That was a weird noise. I've never heard anything like that. There's some eyes right in there. I can see them. Now you scared the shit out of me. Sorry. <laughs> I was looking that way, and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, I'm like, oh." <laughs> Here it's done, but oh, there's some eyes over there too. Yeah. I think those little eyes are raccoons. That was a strange noise, whatever it was. Oh, there's some eyes down there. I think that's a raccoon. Yeah, it's a raccoon. I think. So something big is right on the other side of this creek here. We just heard it, it made a weird, weird sound. Uh, Marnie and I are out here. On the opposite side of the creek, we've been seeing some raccoons, but there's something big back in there with the raccoons. Stick close to. So yeah, the last time that uh, Marnie and I were out here, um, we were over there and right across from area 51 and a half and uh, something big hit our hit the car and come into our camp spot and whatnot and uh it shook uh my car because i was camping in my car and uh we, we couldn't see anything but raccoon prints the next day but uh there's something big that came in our uh camp spot last time and there's something big that just came into our camp spot again um there has been reports of bigfoot out in this area and that scream that we heard uh wild west kid and i over in area 51 and a half that was i've never heard a scream like that ever it wasn't i i don't know what it was i just i've never heard a scream like that it's like a scream howl almost um and like i said if you've been following my channel uh Marne and uh yimmy and wild west kid and i we've been finding some really strange stuff up here uh tonight we're up here camping in the haunted Boot bootleggers canyon and uh, we were just getting ready to settle down and go to start going to bed and everything and then we heard this crazy scream right across the way from us. And uh, so all we saw were a couple of little raccoon eyes and whatnot. But uh, we're going to keep our ears out for that. See if it happens again. But uh, yeah, there's some strange stuff that happens out here. We're not too far from the Uentis. Uh Last time Marnie and I were in this exact spot, we saw a UFO. Or something unidentified flying through the sky. It dropped down white. And then stopped for a split second, took off the other direction, blue. It wasn't like a drone or anything like that. It didn't make any sound. It wasn't a plane. Um, what caught my eye was the fact that 
it looked like a falling star. So we're going to go ahead and stay up a little bit longer and see if we hear that crazy sound again. And that way I can hopefully try to get it recorded for you guys. Because it, it was a crazy sounding scream. But uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated on that and we'll see what happens.